To ensure that these works of justice are accomplished, the Ateneo cannot simply rely on individual conversion. That is the starting point, but it is not enough. There has to be an institutional commitment as well. And I think we see that today in the Ateneo, in these many programs and institutions that the Ateneo supports by way of concrete immersion in the realities of today and the attempt to address them systematically. Programs like the Ateneo Center for Educational Development, now led by Father Ben Nebres and uh, uh, Mrs. Carmela, Mrs. Mel Oracion, no? which tries to see how public school education can be uplifted in the country. The Ateneo School of Government, which trains uh, many of our lawmakers, many of our uh, uh, government officials, no? trying to give them the instruments they will need in order to face the important work of Governance. I was told Ate V, no, Vilma Santos was a graduate of this, the programs they offer there. No? The Gawad Kalinga, Ateneo, of course. No? Many of us are familiar with the admirable work the Gawad Kalinga has done, and they are firmly entrenched here in the Ateneo now. The OSCI, one of the oldest, no? the Office of Social Concern and Involvement, now it has transformed and is supervising the NSTP experience, the National Service Training Program of our freshmen and our sophomores in college. One of the programs of the Ateneo, the Pugadlawin program, no, led by Dr. Benji Losa, who's moderating the other panel uh, next door. No, a political leadership program, not only for students of the Ateneo, but for other schools no, throughout the country. Pathways to higher education, the pioneering work of Harvey Ke and his uh, collaborators in trying to identify needy youth, giving them a chance at a good education. And when you look very quickly, there's not enough time to go to uh, all these in detail. If you look at all the other Ateneos, there are similar parallel programs. Ateneo de Davao, for instance, has all these programs. OSCI has its equivalent in the Arupe Social Formation Office. Their social involvement there takes a decided, uh, a very distinct flavor, a very distinct be uh, bent for Mindanao. And for instance, they have the Mindanaoan Initiative for Cultural Dialogue and others. The same with the others. Ateneo de Naga, the Center for Community Development, similarly mobilizes students and forms them in uh, the, the, the works for justice. Ateneo de Zamboanga, the same thing. And of course, uh, Savior University, which has all these institutes. I, I just like to take note here, for instance, of the Southeast Asia Rural and Social Leadership Institute, Sirsalim, which has made a name for itself through training leaders in the rural sector and was founded by none other than Father William Masterson, former rector and president here at the Ateneo, and who actually brought the, bought this property here in Loyola Heights. And so, brothers and sisters, we see, certainly, Jesuit education continuing this thrust of leading our students to be men and women for others, performing works of justice. But it is not simply in the Ateneos, in the educational sector, that this happens. The Philippine province of the Society of Jesus has deemed the work of justice so essential that it has founded over the years, many independent social institutes. No? Here, what I mean is that they are not affiliated with specific universities or uh, educational institutions. Uh, institutions like the Environmental Science for Social Change of Father Pedro Walpole no? and their pioneering work in the environment. I'll say a little something about them later. The very first uh, social apostolic work no, of the uh, Philippine province in the 20th, uh, of the Philippine Jesuits in the 20th century, the Institute of Social Order. I shall also be saying a little something about them later. Many of us are familiar with the JVP. Myself, Dr. Karaos, and others have been part of the John J. Carroll Institute on Church and Social a Action, uh, uh, issues rather, now named after our founding, uh, our founding director and inspiration all these years, Father Jack Carroll. Father Terry Barcelon, Father Metrio Barcelon in Cagayan de Oro continues his work in the Mindanao Lumad and Muslim Development Center, Milamdek. 
the Philippine Jesuit Prison Service, founded by Father uh, Vic Lavao in the mid-90s, continues its important work among the prisoners in Bilibid in Muntinlupa. And Simbahang Lingkod ng Bayan, net down by Father Javi Alpasa, uh, continues to mobilize the religious and seminarians, the scholastics, for political, electoral action as well as disaster relief. So we see here a concerted effort on the part of the Society of Jesus, especially here in the Philippines, through its schools, through its independent social institutes, to continue this thrust, this thrust of forming men and women for others. Again, the Philippine province has deemed it so important that there have been attempts to try to coordinate the work of these diverse social institutes and student formation and social centers in our universities and outside. In 1981, Father uh, Rene A. Ocampo established what has come to be known as the SGSA, the Society of Jesus Social Apostolate, of which I am now the current coordinator. And its purpose back then, uh, the identified purpose, was to facilitate networking, information exchange, dialogue, pooling of resources, and to consolidate the gains of the various Jesuit social apostolates nationwide. This is important no? because if you go through Men for Others, Father Arupe constantly stresses there that the work for justice has to be systematic. It has to be organized. It has to have maximum effect. It cannot be a flash in the pan undertaking. The SGSA started out with this vision of a society where human dignity, dialogue, peace, sustainable development, people's empowerment, the gospel values are all practiced. All these wonderful uh, values, in other words, no, of which Father Charantone talked about earlier no, in detail. It has the mission, the fourfold thrust of faith, justice, enculturation, and interreligious dialogue, which takes after the, the pronouncements of the 34th General Congregation. I think most importantly for us today and in response to the theme of this talk, no, I would like to share especially a, a very thorough discernment undergone, undergone by the SGSA network back in 2006 when it was still headed by Father Bobby Yap, who is now president of Savior University. Back then, they asked the same question. What are the contemporary challenges that we should face now and which are works for justice in the schools, in the independent social centers should address? And we came up with this list. No? Good governance making sure that government, the political sphere especially, is inculcated with gospel values. Asset creation and redistribution for the poor. The stark reality that poverty remains a terrible and embarrassing problem for our country and which should be addressed. Environmental stewardship, the care for ecology, the care for uh, the natural, our natural resources, Understanding that they are limited and that we should be stewards of them above all. Cultural regeneration. Trying to preserve what is unique in the Filipino culture with a particular bent here, with a particular bias, if you like, especially for our indigenous communities. And that discernment of SGSA finally also identified that Mindanao continues to be a frontier in terms of peace and development, which should draw our very particular and special attention and efforts. There is much here that can be said about SGSA, and unfortunately, there is very little time. Let me just uh, try to focus here on two cases, no, two case in points, to give you an idea about what is being done within the purview of the SGSA. One is to focus on one of our partner institutions, the Institute of Social Order our next door neighbors no, at the Institute on uh, Church and Social Issues. The Institute of Social Order, order uh, deserves special mention here no, because as I was saying earlier, it was one of the earliest social apostolic works uh, founded in what was then the fledging uh, 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 Philippine uh, mission, no? uh, eventually the Philippine province of the Society of Jesus. It was founded by a Jesuit, Father Walter Hogan, and an Athenian, uh, attorney Johnny Tan. 
It started out as a simple clearing house of ideas for people interested in labor issues where they would get the chance to be uh, labor leaders, workers, employers would get the chance to be educated in Catholic social teaching, especially as it applies to labor. Later on, the work of the ISO expanded and it became instrumental in the founding of one of the biggest labor, labor federations today, the FFW, the Federation of Free Workers. It is generally acknowledged to be the oldest NGO in the country. Today, uh, ISO, since 1991, has been housed here at the, Ateneo at the Ateneo campus, at the Social Development Complex. They are very much uh, involved in issues of aquatic and coastal research management. Uh, they are now headed by Dr. Lisa Lim, who also teaches at the Social Anthro Department of the University. Now, come and visit them sometime. In a way, they are one of the, uh, to paraphrase Father Peter Henrio, they are one of the best kept secrets here at the Ateneo. The second, and Father Jet mentioned this earlier, huh? uh, sometime last year, our network, the Society of Jesus Social Apostolate, tried to see what can be done in terms of the very urgent issue of mining in the country, you know, about the whole issue of extractive industries, especially mining in the country. And one of our network activities was to try to draw up a set of talking points, a guidelines to identify what are the principles in Catholic social teaching that should be brought to bear on the mining issue. And if you were re reading the papers around this time last year, you remember that this paper created quite a splash no? uh, on both sides of the mining issue. No? One president of a Jesuit university, whom I shall not name here, uh, told me, you know, uh, said that, uh, you know, that paper of yours is not saying enough. You know? It is actually supportive of the miners. You know? And then, of course, we all read last year about how one of our big benefactors, who will also not be named here, uh, actually withdrew, at least temporarily, his support from the Ateneo because of this paper. You know? uh, it was an attempt on our part, really, simply to identify principles which should guide us in reflecting on the mining issue. But I think this experience brings us to a very important point. No? That if you are to take seriously the issue, the work for justice, one should be prepared for conflict, one should be prepared for misunderstanding, one should be prepared to go back to the basis of one's actions, one's commitment, one's dedication. Okay? So, works for justice. The Ateneo, the social institutes, the Philippine province of the Society of Jesus tries to make this an essential part of its mission here in the country in fulfillment of what Father Pierre no, uh, explained to us earlier. No? The challenge presented by the 32nd General Congregation that indeed our contemporary mission today is the promotion of faith and the, pro the propagation of the faith rather and the promo pro uh, promotion of justice of which it is an essential component. The final and last point, no? and very briefly, possibilities. What are the possibilities for the social apostolate? Not just here in the country for the social work, Ignatian social action, not just here in the country, but beyond our shores. Again, we draw from Saint Ignatius. In the fourth week of the spiritual exercises, uh, Ignatius presents to us in his uh, famous contemplation to attain love a vision of the world in all its aspects, all of creation, reflecting God's love. So much so that we are moved to respond with total surrender. And this is where St. Ignatius introduces that very famous prayer, the take, Lord, receive all my liberty, my understanding, my entire will. It starts again from our starting point earlier an overwhelming experience of God's love seen everywhere. And thus that famous Ignatian phrase, seeing God in all things. And again, I think this has parallels in Pedro Arupe's Men and Women for Others. As he reaches the end of his address, we find Father Arupe turning more and more from our Jesuit institutions, from our alumni, to a grand vision of what a just world may be. 
he says, it is one where evil is overcome only by good, hate by love, egoism by generosity. It is thus that we must sow justice in our world. To be just, it is not enough to refrain from injustice. One must go further and refuse to play its game, substituting love for self-interest as the driving force of society. And here, he comes upon those three, he, he then proceeds with the three famous points underlined by Father Pierre Charantenay. Compelled by love and seeking to transform the world, what should we do? Remember, this is somewhat similar to the works of justice cited earlier by Father Pedro Arupe. But there is a substantial difference. Now he is repeating them, changing them up a bit, with an eye to a vision for the entire world, touching on the basic attitudes of men and women, not just in our schools, but throughout the world. So the threefold invocation, exhortation rather, to have a firm determination to live much more simply. A firm determination to draw no profit whatsoever from clearly unjust sources. And finally, and Pedro Arupe says this, the most difficult of all, a firm resolve to be agents of change in society, to change unjust structures. So in other words, the Jesuit social mission extends ultimately to a vision of a more just world, a just world that finds an inspiration in the heart of God, which reaches out throughout, which reaches out and covers the entire world as well. Now, how do we make this happen? It's a difficult task to be sure. The 35th General Congregation has this to say, you know, a very practical point. The complexity of the problems we face and the richness of the opportunities offered demand that we engage in building bridges between rich and poor and establishing advocacy links of mutual support between those who hold political power and those who find it difficult to voice their interests. The, general, the fathers in the general congregation identified that to, make an effect in, to have an effect in the world today, our efforts should be concerted, networked. And that is why back in, 2000 and, uh, back in 2008, November, in El Escorial, uh, Madrid, we had a group of representatives from various social apostolates all over the world gathering for the Ignatian Advocacy workshop, workshop. The Philippines was represented by, yeah, again, uh, Dr. Jean Caraos over there. No? Uh, the El Escorial workshop is very important, a highlight for Ignatian and Jesuit social action because it is an attempt to give a global aspect to the work of justice that Father Arupe speaks about. In this workshop, the GIAN, no? G -I -A -N, the Global Ignatian Advocacy Networks were born. And there are seven, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five networks no, that were, uh, uh, that emanated from this workshop. Concerns first of migration, second of ecology, and third, more specific to ecology, uh, concerns for the governance of mineral and natural resources, the extractive industries, especially mining. Networking for the right to education, and finally, networking for peace and human rights. As you can imagine, this is a fledgling undertaking. But uh, the Philippines, uh, the Philippine province of the Society of Jesus, is slowly doing its bit to support the Global Ignatian Advocacy Network, especially in the area of environmental concern. Father Pedro Walpole and the ESSC, the Environmental Science for Social Change, are leading the way in advocating for environmental issues, not just in Asia, but throughout the whole world. You know, Father Pedro is often uh, globetrotting you know, all over uh, as he tries you know, to promote awareness of the environment and uh, ecological awareness. And so there you have it. You know? Ignatian advocacy, Ignatian work for justice, Ignatian social action ultimately is aimed at trying to create a world that is more just, more united, more, uh, in the words of John Paul II, 
uh, a, world that is a world that is truly in solidarity. People are truly in deep solidarity with one another because we are sons and children of God. Just some brief conclusions. I think it is only appropriate that we end with Father Pedro Arupe. Uh, first, with Father Pedro Arupe. Having seen how our memories recall the goodness that we have experienced for many of us here at the Ateneo, within these halls of the Ateneo, seeing how the memory of God's goodness pushes us to confront reality through works of justice. And finally, uh, looking beyond our shores and to see the possibilities for Jesuit social action, we realize that more so now, the challenge of Father Arupe is indeed relevant. He ends with these words, only by being a man or woman for others does one be become fully human, not only in the merely natural sense, but in the sense of being the spiritual person of St. Paul. And why? Because in the end, the true man for others, as he says in the end, is none other than Jesus himself. He's the exemplar of and model of being a man and a woman for others. And just one, more, one last quote. No? I think all of this should then challenge us, challenge us to take on this work of justice with a certain urgency. I would like to end with the words of Father John Carroll, no? my long time our long time, my long-time mentor at the Ix, at ICSI, Institute on Church and Social Issues, an inspiration to many of us all here. He says, the situation is crucial, the work is urgent, change takes time, and therefore, there is no time to lose. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Father Robert Rivera, for such a comprehensive and insightful presentation. Our, our two speakers, uh, Father Pierre and Father Robert, uh, presented perhaps four main points. One is the original inspiration of the Jesuit social mission of faith and justice, both the historical and contextual impetus for such calls for men and women for others and education for social justice. Secondly, the underpinnings of this inspiration in the life story, spirit, and spirituality of Ignatius of Loyola, particularly as codified in the spiritual exercises. Thirdly, Father Arupe and his original insight. And uh, Father Pierre also presented the contemporary application and living out or praxis of Pope Francis, a Jesuit, the former Cardinal Bergoglio of Argentina. And then lastly, through Father Robert's presentation, uh, a, a, a sweep of the landscape of initiatives of the current Philippine province, which includes the Ate de Manila and other Ateneos in the Philippines and other Jesuit initiatives all over the world. At this point, I'd like to call Father Pierre and uh, Father Robert on stage.